How's it going? We did it, guys. 10,000 subscribers. Can you believe it? Now, I don't have any fireworks, but I do have a pigtail and some very underrated capacitors. Whoa! If I can't blow up fireworks, I'll at least blow the breaker. That was weak. Here's try two. Woo! <laughs> yeah, that was kind of dumb. Anyway, 10,000 subscribers is a huge milestone, and I am very grateful of you guys that I've even been able to hit it. So thank you so much for all your support. It's been nothing but a positive experience here on YouTube. Now, for my 10,000 subscribers special, I was thinking I'd go through the comments, do like a viewer suggestion kind of thing. And there's one comment that I will always get. Why are your hands filthy in every video? I get my hands dirty working, but wash them when I'm done so they don't look like hobo mitts. <laughs> God damn it, just wash the hands, dude. If your hands weren't dirty and your hair wasn't messy, I wouldn't believe any of your shit. So I really like your shit. Keep it up. Thank you. These hands are unwashable, man. Unless I spent a good 45 minutes every night, they would never be clean. But we're gonna try and rectify that problem today. So today, for 10,000 subscribers, I'm gonna wash my hands. So the main body of this thing is gonna be a Home Depot bucket. And yeah, that's the cleanest one I got. Now, nobody needs to know that this is a name brand bucket. So, let's fix that. Beautiful. Now we don't have any free branding in the video. Oh, those sneaky bastards. So I cut this out on the laser to use as a viewing screen of sorts. But this thing's not quite as flexible as I thought it was gonna be. So we're gonna use my very manly heat gun to try and put a bend in it. Beautiful. We're not quite there with the bend, but we're gonna use the uh, force it method. And now, the reason I never use silicone in any project, we gotta wait 12 hours. Who invented this stuff? So while we wait for that to set up, we're gonna start working on the spray mechanism. I'm thinking a ring that will spray water into the middle and I stick my hand into it. So I've got this stainless steel brake line and we want this to be moving up and down like so. So we need to attach these linear bearings somehow. And the hacksmith welded these. I'm gonna give it a shot. Oh yeah, that's clearly gonna work. Yeah, these linear bearings are far too small to weld without melting everything on the inside. I mean, it still kind of works, but I think that's just because it's hot. New plan. So clearly I'm not the hacksmith. So what I did is I machined these parts to weld onto the tube and then just press fit the bearings into it. Now then, we need our main water hookup on here. I'm gonna use this little shark bite type thing. Don't tell my boss I'm using shark bites. I'll get fired on the spot. Whew, that was tough. I thought shark bites were supposed to be easy. So I got my fittings installed. The only shark bite to NPT fitting I could find was an elbow, so we're stuck with that. Now, gotta drill holes in all these marks. And ideally, the area of these holes all added together will equal the area of this. But I did the math for that, and I'm gonna need a drill bit this small. I don't have that, so I'm just gonna use the smallest drill bit I got, which is this guy, and hope it's okay. Oh, got me. Got our holes drilled in there, they're all a little wonky which is perfect. Now we gotta figure out how to mount our linear rails and whatnot, and this is a great opportunity to show you a cool little feature I added to the laser. So I've set my bucket lid with the thingy on top on the bed of the laser and sent the bed to the bottom. Now I can come into Lightburn and I have a camera installed where I can hit update overlay and it'll overlay the image of the bed on top of my workspace in here. Now I can just draw all the shapes I need cut out on top of the bucket lid on top of this picture. 
I decided to flip the bucket lid over. That way there's a little bit less thingies for the lasers to actually hit. Either way, we're gonna be running this thing uh, pretty far away. So, questionable whether it's gonna cut or not. All right, let it rip. That'll pop out. Pretty cool, huh? That whole camera setup is just a feature of Lightburn. One of the many reasons that I switched my laser control software over to Lightburn. I'm gonna cut the rest of the parts for this out of this thick piece of acrylic. Got the goods. This will hold a stepper motor. This is a platform for it to sit on. And this will hold an ultrasonic distance sensor. And to get them in the bucket, if it would focus, it's not gonna focus. To attach it to the bucket, I've cut these little clippy things. So we'll, we'll see how that works. Got some 30 second super glue. We'll be the judge of that. Nope. I want my money back. While that sets up, we can come over here and ruin a soldering tip. We're just gonna seal this up with a liberal amount of hot glue. Now we just cross our fingers that these linear rails are gonna be in the right spot. Oh! Now for our very permanent and professional way of keeping these in place. Hot glue. Look at this. A 30 second super glue isn't even 10 minute super glue. Well, hot glue. And this guy will attach right here. Like so. And you guessed it. Hot glue. Now then, as for plumbing, it's Thanksgiving. No stores are open, so I'm kind of, you know, stuck with the parts I got. So we're going to use an eighth inch quick connect to a three eighths bushing to a three eighths coupler or to a three eighths by quarter bushing. And then the rest will be quarter inch parts. So, uh, you know, kind of took the long way around, but it it'll do. I was digging through my parts, and look at that, an eighth to quarter bushing. We don't have to do all that dumb stuff. And the other end of this gets a solenoid valve. And of course, seal it up with hot glue. So I've got a stepper motor and an ultrasonic sensor mounted on this piece. We need to figure out where to mount the idler pulley on the other side, and we're gonna use the very accurate drop something method. It'll look like, like there. We're calling it right there. I already went ahead and built the idler pulley assembly. You guys know how much I love snap ranks. Well, I use hot glue. It's a very hot glue heavy project. I'm starting to get embarrassed. So this has to go here-ish. Oh, I looked at the wrong mark. Well, seal it up with hot glue. Oh my God, what, what am I doing? All right. And while we're on the bottom, we need a drain for this thing. And you might be thinking, it'll drain fine through all these hot glue seals, but you know. <laughs> Better safe than sorry. I've gone ahead and installed everything, and it seems to work. I'm gonna turn the stepper. This guy can move up and down. Now how did I put tension on the belt? Zip ties. Definitely not my uh, most well-built project, but could be worse. Now all we gotta do is wire it up, write the program, and give it a test. A few moments later. So, we've got a stepper motor to move, uh, what do we call it? To move our nozzle up and down. We've got a solenoid valve to let the water flow through. And we've got an ultrasonic distance sensor. When the sensor detects that there's something in the way, it starts everything up. So it's just gonna spray my hand with water and move up and down across it. Yeah, hopefully that does something. When there's nothing there, it always returns to the same start position. So, just hooking this thing up to the hose isn't going to clean these hands. So we need a little more power.
Well, my solenoid valve blew up. I should have done this outside. All right, one second. Let's try this again. This time I've installed a manual ball valve on here. Hammer. Now I just gotta do this for maybe 20 minutes and we'll get somewhere. So much easier than washing my hands. Take a look at that, man. Flawless. Yeah, this thing needs work. <laughs> what do you think, guys? I could be a hand model now, right? I won't quit my day job. Yeah, maybe it would be a little easier to just wash my hands. Anyway, jokes aside, if I'm being honest here, even the people saying I have dirty hands, which is an objective truth, is a small minority of the comments that I get. Most of you guys come in with great tips, tons of support, and all around positivity, and I really enjoy reading all of your comments. I want to say thank you guys for coming and watching me do dumb stuff in the shop. Who'd have ever thought that there'd be 10,000 of you? Crazy. Thank you. This YouTube thing is a whole lot of fun and I'm, I ain't going nowhere, man. So I appreciate that you guys want to watch. Thank you for being so kind and supportive and helpful and just thanks for subscribing. I don't know how to end this. Peace. Ha <laughs>